When I set up and design a wireless network, usually one of the first things that I do is decide what frequency band should be used for what purpose, because they can behave differently. And that's what we talked about in the previous video, which is very important, but not enough, because I should also choose a channel for each of those frequency bands. Huh? So if I don't choose a good channel, let's say I end up choosing a crowded channel, for example, the same channel that my neighbor is also using, then it will cause interference and interference is never good. It can mess up my Wi-Fi and also my neighbor's Wi-Fi. I might experience all kinds of issues. Just picture this. I'm sitting here, not that far from the wireless router or access point, but I just cannot connect. It feels as if my Wi-Fi is playing hide and seek with me. And even if I connect, I might get randomly disconnected. And on top of that, my speed can crawl like a snail. And these things can also happen to my neighbor which is not good. So that's why it is very important to always choose the best and least crowded channel for any of those frequency bands. Now the question is, how can we do that? There are actually two methods, two ways I can go about it. The first option is just to let the wireless router or access point do all the work for me automatically. Nowadays, when you do the quick setup for a new wireless router, basically when you're setting up its Wi-Fi, and I've done that a lot in my recent videos, it doesn't even ask you if you want to pick the channels yourself, because I guess it assumes you want it to be handled automatically by the wireless router. Because these devices are becoming more and more capable, they actually can scan the area, check out the channel usage in that area, and select the best channel for me, which is good. So if that's the case and they can automatically select the best channels for me, why should I even bother with the second method, right? So let's wrap up the video right here. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give the thumbs up if you did. No, 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 not yet. I mean, hit the like button if you like the video and I really appreciate it, but I'm just not gonna end the video quite yet because there are more details in that. So let me explain. When the wireless router automatically selects the channels for each frequency band, everything should be fine at that very moment. However, the situation with wireless networks in that area can change really fast. For example, a neighbor's Wi-Fi channel might change or a whole new wireless network might start broadcasting. As a result, even if my Wi-Fi was working fine with those channels, let's say a few hours ago, there's no guarantee that it should be working fine now. So now you might be wondering why my router doesn't keep changing the channels in question every time this happens. The reason why is that because if it is going to change those channels, all the devices that are connected to them will get disconnected in the process, and they can only reconnect when the new Wi-Fi on the new channels are ready. So just imagine how an Annoying this would be if the router has to constantly change its channels. So the bottom line is if I let my wireless router select the channels automatically, which is usually the default behavior for most of the wireless routers, I should keep in mind that it might stick with the same channels for a long time. This could be for as long as it is powered on, its Wi-Fi's are enabled and it is not rebooted, which as we learned it is good for one reason and bad for another. So it is not a bad idea to force the wireless router to search for new channels every now and again, maybe at least once a week, or whenever I experience some Wi-Fi issues. Now I can do that by disabling and enabling that frequency band in question. So for example, I can do that for the 2.4 GHz band, after it is back online, do it for the 5 GHz band, and so on and so forth. This way the wired network will not get interrupted, which is good. Or if I can handle a couple of minutes of downtime for the whole network, I can simply turn the wireless router off and on again, or in other words, reboot it. Many people, even by trial and error, might have realized that turning off and on the wireless router can sometimes fix some Wi-Fi issues, at least temporarily, right? Now we know that it could be because when we do that, the wireless router is going to refresh its Wi-Fi channels. I can also schedule automatic reboots, if of course my wireless router has that feature. Now, because every time the router reboots, the network will also go down for a couple of minutes, it is best to schedule it during a time when the network is not busy, maybe every day at 3 a.m. or something like that.
Now another way that I can use to select the channels as you probably guessed by now is to manually select them myself. The important thing though is that I should not randomly pick any channels because how can I know which one is good and which one is not. So the first step is to use a Wi-Fi analyzer device to determine the best channel or channels for each frequency band. Now, there are expensive Wi-Fi spectrum analyzing tools that are used by professionals to do proper site surveys and determine exactly what is going on in a particular area, how many access points are needed, where they should be located, and so on and so forth. However, they are very expensive and working with them requires more advanced knowledge. On the other hand, there are also Wi-Fi analyzer apps that you can install on your phone, and some of them are even free. While they may not provide as comprehensive information as the professional tools, they're still good enough for us as home internet users to troubleshoot some of our Wi-Fi issues. By the way, if you want me to review the top 5 Wi-Fi analyzer apps, please like this video and if this video gets more than 200 likes in the first 24 hours after it is published, I'll definitely make that video. For the best results, I want to make sure my phone's Wi-Fi technology is not older than my wireless router's Wi-Fi technology. For example, if this is a Wi-Fi 6 phone and the wireless router is also Wi-Fi 6, we are good to go. Now, I would turn the wireless router off, take the phone close to the router, start the Wi-Fi analyzer app, go to the channel graph section and let it scan the environment for about 30 seconds. This is for the 2.4 GHz band, showing all the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi networks that are available here and the channels they are broadcasting on, as well as their signal strength. From this, I can see that channel 8 and 9 seem to be in better shape, even though it looks like there are some interfering signals from the adjacent channels. But compared to the rest of them, channel 8 and 9 appear to be better, especially channel 9. However, if I'm not 100% sure about what I see here, there is usually another section called best channels or something similar which can make my job even easier because as its name suggests, here it will show me the best channels that I can choose for each frequency band. And it looks like I was right about channel 8 and 9, because as you can see, it is suggesting them here as well. It is also suggesting channel 13 and 14, but here in the United States, we can only use 11 channels for the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, and channels 12, 13, and 14 are not available here. Now I can turn the wireless router back on, try channels 8 and 9 for the 2.4 GHz band, test the Wi-Fi and see which one is better and select that. So in this video we learned that I should do my best to always choose a good channel for each frequency band. Now while the wireless router can do that automatically, it might need some help for me to update those channels. We also learned that I can manually select those channels but I should do that with the help of a Wi-Fi analyzer tool. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.